Okay, so if you managed to get this set up, you'll see a screen. Uh, I had everyone go back to the My Sites screen, the main screen. And on, on mine, you'll see that I have several clients' websites that I can access here all their data. I can set up, for all intents and purposes, as many websites as I want. I, because I'm, I'm part of a company where we do this for many clients, we have many websites here. You probably will just have one, your main, <coughs> your main home page. Um, but in general, you're going to see this screen, and the when you set this up, it'll start to track this data. It won't tell you data from last month because you didn't set it up last month. It'll start to track data from when you set it up. So you're going to see these columns, and then we will see more detailed data on another screen. But the basic anatomy of this screen is to manage what are our websites, do I still need to verify a website or not, because I can always go back then to get that code to verify. If I no longer want to manage a website here on Bing Webmaster Tools, I can select it and then delete it. I can export the data and so forth. And then I've got these columns. There's a column for messages. If suddenly Bing detects you've got a virus on your site, you're going to get a message. If there are other such things, you'll get messages to keep up to date. Uh, then we've got these columns that are a little bit more valuable, perhaps clicks from search and appeared in search. This is Bing telling you what it sees on Bing search, that this particular client in this particular time period which is the last 30 days, appeared 16% less times in a search, in a Bing search. On another screen, we'll see exactly what that number is, but here it's a percentage. So this is saying this client appeared a few less times compared to the previous 30 days, but notice that people clicked on the site more than the last time. Sometimes there's an opposite correlation here. Sometimes both of them are positive, or both of them are negative, or both of them are neutral, blue. Um, the right values are going to depend on your site for various factors, as I'll discuss. But here, okay, the site appeared less times, but I got more clicks, so that's good. If it had appeared less times and I got less clicks, that might not be so good. People are not searching for me on Bing, and people are not clicking on me on Bing. But just like the stock market where it's a long-term thing you know this year so far has been a terrible year for the stock for the US stock market this year is 12 days old 13 days old but 360 days later then we'll see you know uh, 500 days later we'll see the stock market is a long game your SEO is also a long game in the last 30 days I got less search and less clicks terrible no, you want to compare it with previous months, longer time horizons. But just going down here, I got more clicks on that client, but less views on search. This other client here, okay, more views, less clicks. I might have to figure out why that is. Um, less views, the same amount of clicks within this time period. Again, if I, and for some reason there's also infinity. But if I stretch it out to longer amounts of time, and then in longer amounts of time, if I get these negative trends, okay, that's something to worry about. But in one 30-day period, not so bad. 60-day period, thir three months, 90 days, one year, in that month amount of trend time, if I'm seeing bad trends, okay, that's something to, to work with, uh, to figure out. So, um, you know, these numbers paint a different picture from more amount of time. You wouldn't know this unless you start to set up these webmaster tools. The next columns are pages crawled and pages indexed. The search engines like Bing are going to send their robots, their spiders, their spider robots, to go to your website and check every screen of your website. They're going to crawl your website. And when there's new content, it'll report that it crawled more new pages. If you haven't added any new content, well, from the previous month, there was less to look at. So you might get a negative number. But if you add a new product page, a new blog post, if you did more on your website, there's more for the spiders to crawl. So you might get a positive number. It found new stuff on the site. That's good. But then we've also got pages indexed. 
Did it find something new and did it save it to the index? Did Bing save it to their big database? Did Google save it to their big database of stuff that it finds on the internet? Just because it saw your page doesn't mean it actually saved it for various reasons. The webmaster guidelines explain all of that, but in general, if it's duplicate content, why would it add it again? If it's a page that already exists more than once on your own site, why would it add it again? If it's content that it sees on someone else's website, why would it add it again? So that's why all of these numbers correlate. You have to look at it in the long view. A correct number doesn't exist for everyone. It would be good for all of them to be green always, but it's not always feasible. And this is just an overview. On your site, because it's brand new, you're not going to see anything. When you set it up and start collecting data, you'll see the data. If you click on your company, you will then see the data in more detail. All these different screens again. If you have a brand new site, you really won't see anything. I'll show you some examples of some clients here. But this particular client in this 30-day period, here's the raw numbers. Clicks from search was, was down 66%, which was 8. The prior period was 24. There were 24 clicks last month. This 30-day period has been 8, so 66% less. Appeared more times, 1%. The amount of pages that it's seen and crawled and indexed is changing there. And notice there's a statistic here of crawl errors. The search engines don't like broken links. If you've got a home page that clicks to your about page, but your about page is down, if someone clicks about us and it goes to 404 error, broken page, the search engines don't like that. They want you to have no broken links. So here, less crawl error things have been have been uh, have been fixed we fix things if there were any broken links and sometimes i've got a link from our website to someone else's website out on the internet that could penalize you as well broken links broken links internally broken links from your site to someone else's site so i wouldn't have known that this can tell me what are those broken links on the deeper reports I mentioned the sitemap. Here it tells me we added the sitemap a while ago. We checked it a while ago. There hasn't really been much change. As this particular client, they do really well. They, they make a lot of sales and such. This is one of the clients that they don't have to invest that much online. They have a nice website. They have a Twitter and a Facebook, and it's not super active, but they make good sales. And it really, on this case, it's based on their product, which is great Italian food. So if you're down in Chula Vista, 3rd Avenue, drop by. It's Italianissimo Trattoria, the one with the hard to say name. But this is a sitemap which has basically a listing of every page on the site. And to make a sitemap, you wouldn't do it you wouldn't really do it manually. You wouldn't code this yourself. It is a complex document. Uh, Bing and Google are going to see it and process it because it's a computer file, something like this. But behind the scenes, it's actually a pretty complex file. Let's see if I can show the example. It's going to look like code. It's going to show, here's this document, last modified, priority, all of this technical stuff. It's an XML file. It's code. I don't recommend trying to create it yourself. You have plugins that will, that will do this, WordPress plugins. And I'll mention here, the one I recommend if you've got WordPress is one called Yoast SEO. Well, we'll check during during the lab time. That's odd, but we'll check. Yes. Oh, they make a Dreamweaver plugin nowadays. Okay, good. So Yoast SEO is the one that I recommend if you've got a uh, a, a a WordPress site. If you've got other software like Wix or Weebly, Squarespace, or whatever. 
I don't work a lot with those, so I would have to look that up. Uh, but I would search for, let's say, Weebly Sitemap. If you've got the Weeb Weebly software, and do a little research yourself. I can help you during lab time and such, but I would search for the name of your product, Sitemap, and see how to make a sitemap for your product, because then we want to submit one as soon as we can. The purpose of that is, let me ask you this. Let's say you go to some other town and you visit a mall, a shopping mall that you've never been to, and you're trying to find a specific store. How many of you are going to wander around until you find the store as opposed to go to that picture of the mall and find the place and walk right to it? <laughs> I, might get a, I might get different answers based on the gender divide. But uh, let's say... <coughs> You want to find that store right away. So you go to that directory at the mall, you find it on the map, you follow the map, you go to the store. That's what a sitemap is for your website. A list of all of your pages on your site so that Bing and Google can find every page on your site easier. So when someone searches how to use the new social network Peach, and you have a page on your site, in your sitemap, that Bing found, that Google found, when someone searches that on Bing or Google, your page could show up because then you're helping the web the webmaster tools know as much as possible about your site. You're directing people with the sitemap. Yes? Last question on the sitemap. Um, yeah, I guess it would take some updating uh, okay, so it's like Well, that's the thing. If you use a plugin like, uh, like Yoast, it updates it for you. Every time you make a change to your site, it updates the map and it submits it for you to the webmaster tools. I'm not sure if the word, if the Dreamweaver one does it for you, but probably. But that's why I'm saying I wouldn't do this myself because to write that XML code is annoying. Question. Do you have Squarespace like I said, I don't I don't work with many others besides WordPress, but we can quickly do a search and, and look up Squarespace sitemap. I'm sure it does. It's a nice modern website tool, so they probably have a version. This is another bit of valuable info here. Search keywords. These are the keywords that people are plugging into Bing um, and, and how I appear. So the name of the company, the name of the company plus the location, Chula Vista. I can see all 169. Fried chicken in Chula Vista. So the client shows up sometimes when people do fried chicken Chula Vista, when they do that kind of search in Bing. But going into detail uh, in these 30 days, um, that didn't result in any clicks. Um, this client was in 13th position, so page 2, of the search results, but it didn't result in any clicks. Um, so I can decide based on my long tail keywords. This is another way to find, figure out your long tail keywords. This is an organic way. This is a way for Bing or Google to show you these are what people are searching. Maybe you never thought of that. Maybe I never thought of using you're planning an intimate affair. Maybe I never thought of that keyword. But Bing saw that, that there were a few hits from it. So what I can do then is use that keyword a little bit more. I can post a tweet. Are you planning an intimate affair? And then a great photo of one of the lasagna and a link back to reserve now because I'm seeing some activity from that. Notice there's also a little dollar symbol next to all of these. This is the whole PPC, pay per click. If I hover over these, main line and sidebar. It's going to cost me five cents either on the sidebar or the main line when someone searches that keyword and my client could appear either on the sidebar or the main line and if someone clicks on my client based on that ad purchase it'll cost five cents. We can put in a pool of $100. Remember, Bing is going to give us $100. We put in a pool of $100, and every time someone clicks, it deducts at $0.05. Cents. So I could possibly get a lot of traffic from that $100.
in this case it's five cents. Some of these other links, I mean some of these other keywords are going to be 25 cents, one dollar, five dollars, Third Avenue Chula Vista food. That one's also five cents. Soul Foods, five cents. Zion, five cents. So, so basically when you set up your campaign, mm -hmm. you would make sure you put restaurant or Zion food or Based on what Bing is telling me here, it guides me to to use the proper keywords. Yes, so that's why we, now, one of that the like reasons. That's the proper keywords in the, in the site, or you were to do a campaign. Um, this is simply telling us what people have searched on Bing related to my site. So I can apply these words to my website for free, completely, or make campaigns, pay for campaigns to get me more traffic based on those keywords. Gotcha. And it's going to be more effective to pay for the keywords to drive the traffic, definitely. But it's going to be free. Looking at this screen, and I figured out a long tail keyword I never thought of, and to use it on my site. Right. Okay. Or Twitter, or whatever. Authentic Italian food in Chula Vista. <clears throat> yes? With search keywords part on this being webmaster, it is a new website. No. You do have to have this set up and it has to track your data for some amount of time. For some people, you'll start to get relevant data within a week, within a month, three months, who knows? So when you set it up and you start to check it, you'll get that data. Yes? For buying keywords, would it um, matter the average search appearance usually? Um, would you want to take advantage if you're on the first page versus on the 87th page? Yeah, it's all related, and that's a balancing act to think about, because notice here, yeah, um, this uh, this one is showing that it is on 2.9, so it's about the third position on the page. This one's on the sixth position. This one's on the, on the 87th position. There is a value to try to use a, a less popular keyword as well, because you have less competition. At the moment, it's telling me it might cost me five cents to be on position number three. But then perhaps if the competition is savvy, they're looking at this as well. And they're seeing, okay, maybe I'm going to bid 10 cents per keyword, and then now they've surpassed me and I'm knocked down a little bit. Opposite side is, well, what if I spend these five cents on being position 87 and I keep using it as time goes on? And that might itself rise me higher because I'm getting less competition. Other people are not targeting 87th position. That might be a viable way, that might be an expensive way, it might be a dead end. But this is the, the state of things where if we're gonna go through the paid ver paid aspect of things, sometimes we need to spend to figure out is it really worth it? What works, what doesn't. Throw a little money at the problem and it does help. But again, easy way, hard way. I'm doing the hard way usually. Go back to this main dashboard here. Inbound links this is a very important. Uh, this is a very important screen that we're going to look at, but we'll talk about it in more detail next time. Diagnostics. That's kind of advanced, also. So there's lots of screens here. We'll talk about it more next time because hopefully you guys will have some data to show for it next week. Uh, I want to get. I want to see if more people can set this up, and then when we come back next week, we'll try to look at more of this data that makes sense. Um, we're going to switch over to do this for Google in just a moment, but any general questions on Big, Bing Webmaster? Okay. You can leave this open or you can log out, but I'm going to switch now to work with Google. <clears throat> 